Hi, I'm Miller and welcome to another Miller's Gaming video. Uh, this one is going to be a bit different to what I normally do because this is going to be more of an informational video. If you like the channel, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing, etc. for the algorithm. Thank you very much. Anyway, this is going to be a video about Nipponichi's history with visual novels because following the confirmation of a certain localization announcement a few weeks back, uh, I figured now it's time to make a video explaining more about uh, NIS's vision novel lineup and their history because it's actually a pretty big deal in the world of vision novels and to an extent maybe even wider of games as well. But basically, NIS have a ton of vision novels in Japan that they've worked on over the years or been involved with in some way that have not left Japan for the most part. So this isn't like a new thing they're doing, it's something they've basically been doing for a long time but it's only now coming to the West. So I'm going to start with the game localization itself that's been announced, uh, Tantai Bokumetsu, which is known as Process of Elimination. This is one of the newest titles they've put out. Uh, this is a murder mystery vision novel with gameplay elements, where you play as one of 14 elite detectives whom are trying to track down a serial killer known as the Quartering Duke, who's killed over 100 people. So yeah, pretty grim. And the twist, uh, the Quartering Duke is actually one of the detectives, so you're on this island with 12 other people and the killer, so you've got to work out who it is. Uh, it sounds great and actually quite like an ideal choice for localization because it is a murder mystery game. I've got no idea how it was received in Japan, but the fact this is the first Nipponichi Vision novel to get localized properly by NICER suggests it'll be a good time, so one to keep an eye on. Anyway, now on to the history lesson. Uh, obviously, as mentioned already, this isn't the only game they've worked on. They've actually been making vision novels right back to the late 90s, including horror games. But I won't go over everything here because there's just too much to talk about, and frankly, a lot of them are quite obscure, where there just isn't anything on the English VNDB or similar sites because no one plays them. So I'll only be highlighting some of the stuff that's noteworthy. And unless I say otherwise, these do not have an English translation either a bit officially or via a fan translation, but there are a few exceptions which I will talk about. Anyway, starting with Horror VNs now. They're responsible for the long-running uh, Hayarigami series. This is a series of dark murder, mystery and horror vision novels that started back in 2004, originally for the PlayStation 2. In each game, you play as a police officer whom is tasked with solving murder mysteries and then of course urban legends and horror is mixed into it and it's quite dark, quite gory. Um, I don't know much about the series in terms of like the individual games because again lack of information but generally the mysteries differ by game but that's a general idea of these overlapping themes. Now you can kind of split this series into like three like three titles in like two separate like arcs if that kind of makes sense. You've got the original Hey Arigami trilogy for the PlayStation 2. These were later ported to the PSP, which bear the old stuff for ones that you don't know much about on PNTB at all and uh, aren't as accessible now. But then you've got the Shin Hey Arigami trilogy, which are the more recent HD titles and the ones that some people will be a bit more aware of. Shin in the context of this kind of title means new, so kind of like Shin Megami Tensei or new Suha Brothers, even though Shin isn't used in the Japanese title. So these are, I guess these are kind of like a soft reboot because they're, well, they're new and there wasn't a game for quite a gap between the end of the first arc and the start of the second. Uh, the first Shin Hayarigami game came out for the PlayStation 3 and the Vita in 2015 and then the second game came out a few years later, this time for PlayStation 4 and Vita. And then last year, in 2021, the third game came out for the PS4 and Switch, and that's the most recent, like, new game. Although the, the, the first two Shin Hayarigami games were also ported to the Switch and released as a double pack. Um, and the first Shin Hayarigami game also came to phones. And now the interesting thing here is that the first Shin Hayarigami game actually did get some form of English release. Uh, this game was originally picked up for an episodic English release on the phones by a company called iPlay under the name True Urban Legends Shin Hayarigami. If you didn't know about this, don't worry, pretty much no one did. Even Gimatsu didn't know for a month till after it came out and if you know anything about niche gaming news, you'll know Gimatsu are generally on top of everything and get things out first. So you, that's basically how pads this dev screwed up in not like advertising this game. 
but it wasn't just that. The translation itself was quite bad initially, and even after retranslation, it was never completed because they were only doing it episodically. So they only did like the first like one or two, I think. But at this point, it's now abandoned where so you can't even play it anymore unless you have a really old phone, which leans into the whole like mobile phone preservation thing, which I'm not going into, but generally not good luck. However, since then, fans have actually picked up the game as a fan translation for the Switch version. So hopefully that does come out because it'd be nice to see this come out in English finally. And as for localizations, um, anyone's guess really? Um, not likely, but Shin Hirogami 3 did get a release in Korea. So even after the first like game mis mishandled, this third game came out on consoles from a different company. So keep an eye on that. This is about a company called Fog, short for Full On Games. I know that sounds like the name of an Iroki company, but it's not. Uh, this is a company they've worked with since the late 90s, mainly releasing console ports of titles like you've never heard of, like uh, Bushojo, Hanafuda, Kiko, Michinoku, Hito, Koniga Monogatari, uh, a romance adventure game where you go and sightsee with the heroines. They also worked on Kuon no Kazuna, a darker court game also with romance. Uh, they would also like publish their releases on consoles later on, even if they're not originally PC games as well. So, and some of the games that Fog have worked on are actually Iroki, by the way. So yeah, Nipponichi owns the rights to some Iroki titles, which uh, isn't unique among Japanese publishers. Anyway, Fog also did invade some murder mystery games of their own, like uh, Amagushi no Yakata. This game kind of has a similar setup to Night of the Kamitachi in that the characters are trapped in a mansion cut off from the world due to bad weather. They've done like other titles as well, but always have obscure little like individual titles, which I'm not going into them because there's just too many. And uh, NIS would actually acquire Fog in like mid 2010s, like around 2015. So now Fog at this point is a subsidiary. So they're basically the label of NIS for VNs for this particular portion, which is a little interesting curio. That said, the series Fog I'm most well known for is something that the Westerners might have actually heard of, and that is the Furaiki series. And that's because this series has the resurgence of popularity since they decided to make Furaiki 4. Uh, now, now, this game is really unique, it's really cool, and it's something that is unique not just in visual novels but also in the whole of gaming. This is a blend of virtual photography, of real life scenery in Japan, as well as a Bushojo dating sim. So it's not just anime backgrounds or CGs, the only actual anime drawings in the game are character portraits of the characters, but actual photos and videos of real life locations in Japan, you can use arrows, you can scroll around, you can actually like, it feels like you're actually there basically, and it's known as being quite relaxing and cosy, and a very unique experience. Uh, Furaiki started on the original PlayStation and it was set in Hokkaido. Uh, Furaiki 2 was set in Okinawa and then released for the PlayStation 2 a little bit later and then a PS2 port of the original Furaiki. And then you've got Furaiki 3 which prior to Furaiki 4 was the most recent release. Uh, it originally released for PC in 2013 and then got an enhanced port for the Vita in 2015. Uh, now, much like the first game, Furaki 3 was also set in Hokkaido, so in a way it kind of goes full circle. That's a, that's a pun. If you know Japanese, you get that one. Uh, this one also has a fan translation patch in the works, so hopefully that comes out because it would be a great thing to have on the beta. And now for Furaki 4, which is the game that most people wouldn't think of when they think of the series. This came out for the PS4 and Switch last year, and this one is actually set in Gifu Prefecture, which is in central Japan, so it's new to the series, and it's a prefecture that NIS are actually based in in real life. And it's also unique though, because this has DLC, where you can actually travel around the neighboring prefecture as well on your bike, and that's just really cool. And because of the popularity of the Switch, uh, there are a lot of diehard importers and collectors for the Switch also imported this game for themselves, and it has received positive reception. Uh, I actually have done it myself. 
it's a really unique brand and as someone who's actually like lived in Japan for a bit, like I studied abroad there uh, years ago, it was a truly immersive nostalgia trip and it's something that I think if you've actually got that nostalgia for Japan or just are really into Japan, as in a Japanophile, not an otaku in the Japanese cultural sense, you've, you've, I think you'd find a lot to like about it. Um, I'll say that from experience. However, because it is a visual novel, it does require Japanese knowledge to fully enjoy. Like because of the text, like it will be like you can you can work out how to play the photos without Japanese, but to actually enjoy it fully, you need Japanese. It's still worth checking out though because it's so unique. And this is the one that I personally want to see localized the most, and I'm hoping because it's the most recent game in the series, it will eventually get picked up. And I think it would do well here. Now on to other miscellaneous titles. Uh, the first game I'll discuss is one that NICER did actually release in North America, although only likely only because it was a Disgaea game and isn't truly representative of their visual novel library. Uh, Disgaea Infinite released in the West officially on the PSP like many years ago, like 29, 2010, that kind of thing. And from what I gather, it was very short, received mixed reviews, and partly because a lot of people probably didn't expect it to be a visual novel rather than a strategy RPG, which is what this guy is known for. It also never came out physically in Europe and generally fell into obscurity. Another more recent title is Bokuhimi Project. Um, this isn't so much a visual novel, but or like purely visual novel, but it's a multimedia franchise. It started as a serialized manga, but thanks to demand by the Japanese fan base for this manga, a visual novel adaptation was produced and released for PS4 and Switch in 2020. It was written by somebody called Joanna Kento, is also behind the process of elimination game. So yeah, a little something else from the creator, which is pretty cool. In this particular game, you play as a guy whose sister fell into a coma. So in order to try to find out what happened and how to save her, he basically cross-dresses to enter an all-girls school. So that sounds pretty cool, actually. Now, if you know this game exists, and I have to address this elephant in the room, because if you go look up articles on this game and read the comments, you will see stuff about it. I do have to address it because I feel that it does misrepresent what the game is a bit. Like, a lot of people think that NICER won't localise it due to what quote-unquote SJWs would think. So, because of its content relating to like cross-dressing and stuff like that, it's it's crap because it's a business decision not to release this. Um, and also like people, especially the same people that are, are saying that, also attaching the transphobic trap slur to the game, which is not only toxic and off-putting because it is a transphobic slur and I will not be arguing that with anyone. If you disagree, educate yourself, but also because it's not representative of the game at all. Like, it's a shame because this game is rooted in purely in cross-dressing and not related to transgender issues at all. And it looks to be pretty wholesome and a hidden gem potentially worth checking out, which it's a shame when you get fan bases like misrepresent games like this or people who don't know much about these games themselves applying things like that. So Bear in mind with this one, ignore the online discourse about it and just look into it yourself. And if you check it out, it won't be what people are saying. As an aside, this game did come out on Steam in 2021 and you can buy it yourself regardless of region, even though you can get it a lot cheaper physically. But it's only in Japanese and published by Nipponichi Software themselves. So unless you can read Japanese or a fan patch ever releases for it, it's unlikely you'll ever be able to play it. Another one, Yoru Tomosu. This is a Yuri vision novel for the PlayStation 4 and the Switch, which is set in an all-girls boarding school where the students create a quote-unquote suedo sister system. Under this system, the two girls would exchange each other's most possessed, like, valued possessions and form a sister contract until graduation. And this was done to combat loneliness or isolation in the boarding school. This is another horror VN, lots of dark themes, including some triggering stuff, which I'm not going to detail here. But it's interesting that they did a Yuri VN, so that's why I want to highlight that. Another game I wanted to highlight, not because of the game so much itself, but also because of the fact that this is one of the few you can play in English. Uh, this is called uh, Harum Tengoku Dato Omitara Yandere Jikoku Jata. Data, not Jata. Data. Otherwise known as I thought it to be Harum Paradise, but it turned out to be a Yandere Hell, which is 
honestly pretty self-explanatory. Um, but it's got, as I mentioned, there's a couple of noteworthy things about it. First one is that it's exclusive to the PlayStation 3 and features gory and creepy themes because it revolves around the Andere, which, uh, well, it's the Andere, so um, it's quite unique in that sense. I think it's the only one they've ever done, actually. But the secondly, its game does have a YouTube fan translation by someone known as uh, Verdalish Japan. And she's one of the fan translators at the time who would later go professional and actually bring over other games, especially Otome games like Toshio X Alice and Fashion Little Miss Lonesome and a bunch of other things. So it's just a little example about how fan translating Japanese games can be a stepping stone to a legitimate career. And these videos to this day are still up on, on our YouTube channel. So if you want to see them, check them out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I don't know if it's complete or not because bear in mind I'm not into Yandere, so I'm not going to watch the videos, so just a heads up. And now I'm going to finally touch on some of the third party collaborations because this video has gone on a lot longer than I expected. Uh, the most notable one is the Utano Prince Sama Otome game series of Broccoli. If you're into Otome games you will know what this is, it's basically go to save Otome Academy. You gotta find a boy to turn into an idol and romance, quite light hearted, cute, with a lot of rhythm gameplay. Uh, Nippon Ichi Software used to be quite heavily involved with the series, like they developed the original game and some of the early fan discs and sequels such as Amazing Aria and Sweet Serenade. And these games were available across the PSP and Vita and the Switch. Um, but of course they seem to have taken a step back, but if you load up a game you still find their, like, their logo credited, so they're clearly still involved to an extent. Don't ask me the details because I'm not involved in those decisions. But um, they've never come west, but the console games could potentially come west in the future because, well, Shining Live for phones came over by K-Lab and that has done exceedingly well. And um, more recently, uh, Broccoli have licensed out Jack Gian for a worldwide release, so if that does well, potentially we could see these other games, so that's to speculate, but it's still a possibility. Another collaboration they did with Broccoli was a franchise called uh, Kami Gobi to Azobi, which is like themed around gods around from various backgrounds. And uh, there are only two titles here, both on the PSP, latter one on the Vita, and both of them released in a double pack for the Switch. Final two now uh, that I'm going to talk about. Uh, NIS assisted with the console version of an occult horror vision novel called Iwahimi. If you are in the 7th expansion fan base, you will know what this is because this game was written by Ryukushio7, who did like Higarashi, Umineko, all those games. And this game was originally released by DMM Games for PC back in 2015. And then NIS basically dealt with the port, which is called Iwahi Matsuri in Japan. And it released for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita back in 2017. It featured a new console exclusive arc known as... And then this content was incorporated into the official Steam release of Iwahimi by DMM Games themselves under their publishing label Shire of the Yen in English and Chinese as well as Japanese. Uh, it included some revisions to the plot and makes that version for definitive release and, that in, and it's just a nice little package. Uh, Nipponichi's copyright is also included in that version, so if you play the game, you can see their name and logo on there. Uh, additionally, NIS did actually release the PS2 port of a game called uh, Aoyumi no Tristia, which this is quite old, it goes back to like 2005. It's actually a Kagado Studio title, and at the time of recording this, Kagado Studio has actually just announced that this game will be coming west next year for Switch and PC under the name Tristia Legacy, so that's a really cool little interesting curio at the time of uh, recording this. Anyway, I've been going on for a while now. I, I'm not going to go over everything, like I've, I've deliberately not talked about System Soft Beta, for example, and a bunch of the other games they've put out, so there's a lot more for to look up yourself if it's worth doing. I know my facts might not be 100% correct regarding some of the smaller details because again I don't speak Japanese well enough to understand all the information but I hope for English speakers this gives a general idea about their history and, and bring more attention to these games and could potentially factor into bringing some of them over in the future especially for our people please. Anyway, thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a lovely day. Please like, comment, subscribe, etc. and so on and so forth for the algorithm and support this channel. Thank you very much and bye bye.